same things. You have chordae tendinae. You have papillary muscle, papillary muscle, carne or uh, carne trabecula, carne trabecula. Okay, and that would uh, show you some of the main parts of the atria and ventricles. Now, there is another important thing here about the atria and ventricles. Here in the ventricles, after the blood has entered into the ventricle, the blood then is pumped up this way past another valve here that leads right into the pulmonary trunk. This valve is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary semilunar valve, therefore this is the pulmonary trunk. So this is, on the, this is coming from the right ventricle. From the left ventricle, you have to look up there carefully, so I'll bend this around this way. Oh. Okay. And in there, you see another semilunar valve. Okay, so from the left ventricle, the blood then is pumped up this way past this valve. It's called the aortic semilunar valve. And from there, the blood then goes into the aorta. Into the aorta. So semilunar valve, aortic semilunar valve, pulmonary semilunar valve. They actually are uh, called like that because of the valves. The valves are found at the origin or at the base of these two large arteries here. Okay? So, uh, that covers all of these large vessels of the heart. One more time. The pulmonary trunk. This would be your left pulmonary artery, your right pulmonary artery. The aorta which actually, if you look at it, actually emerges out from the left ventricle. Okay, pulmonary, the aorta. These are the three important branches of the arch of the aorta. The brachiocephalic trunk. The left common carotid artery. The left subclavian artery. The arch of the aorta. And then here you have the beginning of the descending aorta. Uh, by the way, this would be the ascending aorta, this small section right here. Then with veins, we have the superior vena cava. If you're wondering what this is, this is the left brachiocephalic vein, the right brachiocephalic vein, and the, um, this was the superior vena cava. Good. And then this one down here was the inferior vena cava. Okay? Uh, and then if we turn this around carefully, we can also appreciate much more easier the pulmonary veins, two that come from the right lung, and two pulmonary veins from the left lung. Okay? Now, this is a good time now to discuss the <clears throat> the coronary system. The coronary uh, circulation involves these tiny little arteries that will supply the cardiac muscle with oxygen and nutrients. Okay, The cardiac muscle, just like any other tissue, needs to receive oxygen and nutrients as well. And how does it do it? It does it through this coronary circulation. Okay, Now, just to see a little bit clearer, I'll open this slightly this way. And to see here, number one, this is the right coronary artery, which is emerging out from the aorta. This is the aorta. So right here at the base of the aorta, you have the right coronary artery. It comes down this way, and it gives off several important branches. This branch that you see right here along the right edge of the heart is called the right marginal artery. Right marginal artery. Then. I just take this off of the stand and I continue to follow the, follow the right coronary artery around this way towards the back surface of the heart. I hear the back surface of the heart and you see this important branch here. This is called the posterior interventricular artery. 
posterior interventricular artery. Now, there are many other small branches. Uh, these are perhaps the main two branches of the right coronary artery. So all of this here, again, right coronary artery, the right marginal artery, and the posterior interventricular artery. Now, let me turn this back around. Now we'll take a look at the left coronary artery. Now the left coronary artery, it's not clearly visible because most of it is underneath the pulmonary trunk. So most of it is underneath this large vessel here. But you can see a small part of it. This small section right here, this is part of the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery then splits, bifurcates, into this important branch here. This is called the circumflex artery. It's called circumflex because if you look at what it does, it wraps around the left edge of the heart and it comes around to the back of the heart. This is your circumflex artery. The other part is this part right here, starting here, and it comes down along the front of the heart in between both ventricles, and it's called the anterior interventricular artery. Interior, anterior interventricular artery. So as you can see, the left coronary artery is very short, and it splits into the circumflex artery and the anterior interventricular artery. So that covers the arterial uh, supply to the heart muscle. Now, how does the heart muscle, how does the cardiac muscle get rid of the carbon dioxide and waste? Well, it does it through veins. And these veins are called cardiac veins. There's three important cardiac veins. Number one, this one right here on the front surface of the heart. It comes up this way and it wraps around like this. Again, it comes up this way, wraps around like this, around the left edge of the heart to the back of the heart, like this. And it drains right into this large structure here. This long one that I just showed you, this is called the great cardiac vein. The great, because as you can see, it's very long, and it comes all the way around to the back surface of the heart the great uh, cardiac vein, empties right into here, the coronary sinus. This is the coronary sinus. Remember that name. I said coronary sinus when we were looking at the, uh, the right atrium. Okay? So this is the great cardiac vein, all of this. Okay. We do have two other cardiac veins. We have here a much smaller one. Comes up this way and it makes a U-turn like this right into the coronary sinus again this one here on the left edge of the heart on the right edge of the heart again on the right edge of the heart comes up this way makes a U-turn and it comes right here it drains right into the coronary sinus this vein we call the small cardiac vein so we have a great cardiac vein and a small cardiac vein Finally, we have a middle cardiac vein. This is the middle cardiac vein. Middle cardiac vein comes up this way on the dorsal surface of the heart, middle cardiac vein. So you can see all the cardiac veins, the great cardiac vein, the small cardiac vein, and the middle cardiac vein all drain into this large sac-like venous structure called the coronary sinus. Now, let me show you the coronary sinus one more time on the inside coronary sinus will open up in here into the right atrium and open up through this little opening here in the, close to the floor of the right atrium. That's the opening of the coronary sinus. Okay, So for blood supply of the cardiac muscle, we will use the coronary arteries and the cardiac veins and all the different branches that we mentioned. Okay, one last thing. This here is actually a ligament, but at some time during fetal development, it was actually a vessel, a blood vessel that connected the pulmonary, uh, the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. 
okay? But when you are born, that, 